Hello and welcome. Today's lecture will be from Unit 1 on the Physics Foundations for DC Circuits. Lecture 1-3, Sources, Resistors, Ohm's Law, Power Calculations. Students should be reading sections 2.1 through 2.3 of the textbook in order to supplement today's lecture and help prepare for the exam, homework, and quizzes. Objectives, be able to explain Ohm's Law, power across a resistor, ideal voltage and current sources, active and passive circuit elements. Be able to identify resistors in a network. Be able to solve for voltage, current, and power in a resistive network. And be able to apply the law of conservation of energy to a resistive circuit. An electric source is a device that is capable of converting non-electric energy to electric energy and vice versa. These sources can either absorb power or deliver power, generally by maintaining either voltage or current. Independent sources establish a voltage or current in a circuit without relying on voltage or currents elsewhere in the circuit. Dependent sources or controlled sources establish a voltage or current in a circuit whose value depends on the value of a voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. Dependent sources are used to model transistors and operational amplifiers. There are two independent sources. Independent sources establish a voltage or current in a circuit without relying on voltage and currents elsewhere in the circuit. The first independent source is an ideal current source. This circuit symbol is a cir circle and must include an arrow for the direction of the current and a value IS. An ideal voltage source, this circuit symbol is also a circle and must include a polarity for the reference voltage and value VS. You should be familiar with ideal current and voltage sources from your physics course. There are also four dependent or controlled sources. They establish a voltage or current in a circuit which depends on a voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. You may not be as familiar with these, but an example of a dependent source could be an operational amplifier or a transistor. The first type of dependent source is a current controlled current source or CCCS. The circuit symbol is a diamond and it must include an arrow because it's a current source so that you know the direction of the supplied current. There's also a formula to calculate the supplied current from the controlling current IX. The formula is beta IX where beta is the gain and it is unitless. Voltage controlled voltage source or VCVS. This circuit symbol is a diamond and it must include a reference polarity for the supplied voltage, a formula to calculate the supplied voltage from the controlling variable VX. Its gain is mu, and mu is also unitless. Voltage controlled current source, or VCCS, this circuit symbol is a diamond and it must include an arrow for the direction of the supplied current, a formula to calculate the supplied current from the controlling variable VX. The formula is alpha VX and alpha now does have units. It has units of amps per volt or it could be considered transconductance. Current controlled voltage source or CCVS, this circuit symbol is a diamond and it must include a reference polarity for the supplied voltage and a formula to calculate the supplied voltage from the controlling current IX. And its formula is rho IX, where rho has units of volts per amp, which could be considered trans resistance. An active circuit element is one that models a device capable of generating electric energy, such as the six sources we just described. A passive circuit element models physical devices that cannot generate electric energy, such as resistors, inductors, and capacitors. They are examples of passive circuit elements. Please note that inductors and capacitors can deliver energy to a circuit, but only energy that has been previously absorbed from an active circuit element, such as a voltage or current source. In class activity one, what value of VS is required in order for the following interconnection to be valid? Notice that this circuit has two nodes. We call this a single node pair. Note that a node is where two or more circuit elements meet in a circuit. So where the two nodes could be considered the two meeting points where the three circuit elements meet. The three circuit elements are the independent voltage source, the current controlled voltage source, and the independent current source. When you have elements that meet at a node pair, we say that these elements are in parallel. Elements that are in parallel have 
the same voltage. The same voltage means the same polarity, location of the positive and negative charge, and the same numeric value. So the first thing we're going to do is find I0. Since I0 points down and the eight amp current source points up, that means that I0 will have a value of negative eight amps. If I0 had pointed up just as the current source, it would be positive eight amps. So now we'll find six I0 is equal to six times negative eight, which equals negative 48 volts, which represents the value of the current controlled voltage source. So positive on top, negative on bottom, negative 48 volts. That means all three elements are positive on top, negative on the bottom, negative 48 volts. So VS is also positive on top, negative on the bottom, negative 48 volts. So when VS is equal to negative 48 volts, this makes this circuit have a valid interconnection. In class activity two, what value of alpha is required in order for the interconnection to be valid? So here we have what we call a single loop where we have several elements where exactly two of them meet at a node. So they're all end to end. When exactly two elements meet at a node, we say that they are in series. Elements that are in series have the same current. So here we have an independent voltage source, an independent current source, and a voltage controlled current source in series. So that means they have the same current, which means they have the same direction, and the current has the same numeric value. So if we look at the eight amp source, that current flows counterclockwise, which means the current through all of the elements is eight amps and it flows counterclockwise. Since I have another current source, the voltage controlled current source that has a value of alpha VX and its arrow is opposite the eight amps, we know that for this to be a valid interconnection, alpha VX has to be negative eight. So now we need to find VX. Since VX is across the 10 volt source, it has a numeric value of 10 volts exactly because they have the same polarity. So alpha is equal to negative eight over 10 or negative 0.8, and it has to have units of amps per volt because we had a voltage controlled current source. The units for alpha could also be written as Mohs or Siemens because it is a transconductance. Resistance is the capacity of materials to impede the flow of current or the flow of electric charge. The circuit element used to model this behavior is the resistor. Many useful devices take advantage of resistance, including stoves, toasters, irons, and space heaters. The following two devices show the circuit symbol for a resistor, as well as what an actual real world resistor looks like and what you would see in your lab. Ohm's law describes the voltage across a resistor as V equals I times R, where the current goes into the positive and out of the negative, where R is the voltage in volts. I is the current in amperes and R is the resistance in ohms. The reciprocal of resistance is conductance G measured in Siemens or Mohs, where G is equal to one over R. The power dissipated in a resistor is given by the following formulas. P equals I squared R or V squared over R or V squared G or I squared over G. And notice all of these formulas fall from follow from P equals V times I. So this symbol that I found on the web shows a graphical representation of what happens with resistance. You have the voltage that pushes the flow of current or the flow of charge, which is current. However, you have a resistance in ohms that restricts the flow of current. So the tighter the resistance holds, the higher the voltage drop and the lower the current. FE preview. A five ohm resistor is placed in series with a varying current. Most nearly how much energy is dissipated by the resistor over the four second time interval shown. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define I of T. So I of T is equal to two amps when T is between zero and two seconds. And I of T is equal to four amps when T is between two and four seconds. Power 
is equal to i squared times r or i squared times five because we have a five ohm resistor. So the expression for the power P of T becomes 20 watts for T between zero and two seconds and 80 watts for T between two and four seconds. So now we're going to make a sketch of the power. And what you should notice is that the shape looks exactly like it does for the current, except the amplitudes are different. So we're going to have 20 watts between zero and two and 80 watts between two and four. And the energy is going to be the integral from zero to T, P of tau D tau, plus the initial energy, which is zero for a resistor. And remember the integral of a graph is the same as area under the curve. So we're going to find the area under this plot of the power. Which is going to be the sum of the area for two rectangles. So the energy is going to be 20 times two plus two times 80. So the energy is going to equal 200 joules. All right, let's try another in-class activity. For the following circuit, confirm that it satisfies the law of conservation of energy. So here we have a four volt independent voltage source with VX across it, a 10 ohm resistor, a five ohm resistor, and two VX, which is a voltage controlled current source. So the first thing we're going to do is we see we have a single loop and all of the elements are connected at exactly one node, which means they are in series or they have the same current. Since Vx is across the four volt source, Vx is going to equal four volts. So two Vx is going to be two times four, which is eight amps. Since this is defined to be a counterclockwise current, we have eight amps that flows counterclockwise through the 10 ohm resistor, through the four volt source, and through the five ohm resistor. So since resistors obey the passive sign convention, they always absorb power, so we're going to label positive on the right and negative on the left for the 10 ohm resistor and positive on the left and negative on the right for the five ohm resistor. So we can make an equation for the voltage for the 10 ohm resistor that is 10 times eight or 80 volts positive on the right. And for the five ohm resistor, it's five times eight, which is 40 volts positive on the left based upon Ohm's law. The law of conservation of energy states that power delivered equals power absorbed, or another way of stating that is that the sum of the power is equal to zero watts. So we're now going to make a law of conservation of energy table to find the power for each of the elements. So in the first column of the table, I'm going to list the 10 ohm resistor, the five ohm resistor, the four volt source, and the two VX source. The total will be to check the law of conservation of energy. They all have eight amps because they're in series. So I put eight down the current column. Then I'll have 80 volts for the 10 ohm resistor, 40 volts for the five ohm resistor and four volts for the four volt voltage source. The power for the four volt source is 32 watts absorbed based upon the passive sign convention with eight amps flowing into the positive terminal. So I now have eight times eight, which is 640 for the 10 ohm resistor, 40 times eight, which is 320 for the five ohm resistor and four times eight, which is 32 for the four volt source. I now use Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of the voltages around the loop is equal to zero, or that voltage rises equal voltage drops to find the voltage for the voltage control current source. So here I'm showing a diagram of all of the voltages on the loop in order to help me use KVL to solve for the voltage across that dependent source. So when I add up the voltages, I have 80 volts plus four volts plus 40 volts, which are all voltage drops. So I must have a rise for the dependent source. 80 plus four plus 40 is equal to 124 volts. So I now have 124 times eight 
or negative 992 watts, which is the power delivered by the dependent source. In class activity, for the following circuit, confirm that it satisfies the law of conservation of energy. We have a current controlled current source, 0.5 I naught, a four ohm resistor with I naught flowing down through it, and an independent 12 volt voltage source. So the first thing we do is circle our nodes, and we have two, so this is called a single node pair. And when you have a single node pair that connects elements on both sides, we say they're in parallel or have the same voltage. Parallel and same voltage means that all three elements are positive on top and negative on the bottom with a 12 volts across them. So then we can find I naught by using Ohm's law where I naught is equal to 12 divided by four, which is three amps. And now we can find the value of the current controlled current source, which is 0.5 times I naught, which equals 1.5 amps. Next, we're going to use a law of conservation of energy table in order to confirm that this circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy. The first column is the elements, the four ohm resistor, 0.5 I naught current source and 12 volt source. And then we'll put the 12 volts for each of the elements because they're all in parallel. And we'll put the three amps for the four ohm resistor. And we'll put the 1.5 amps for the current controlled current source. And we're going to need to use KCL in order to find the current for the 12 volt source. KCL states that current in equals current out or the sum of the currents into and out of a node is equal to zero. So we're gonna make a diagram in order to find this current. So here are our three elements in parallel. And then we have our current down, three amps through the middle, 1.5 amps at the top. And then we have our 12 volt source. So then we're going to have that the current through the 12 volt source plus 1.5 has to equal three because current out equals current in. So the current for the 12 volt source is equal to 1.5 amps. So we put 1.5 on our table. And now we're going to calculate our power. Since the current is going into the negative on the 12 volt source, that's going to be 12 times 1.5 or negative 18 watts. So both sources deliver power and the total power is zero. So this does obey the law of conservation of energy.